All right, so in an earlier video, you maybe heard me reference DX rectangles. We're gonna talk about DY rectangles. And um, I'm gonna, while we talk about this, I'm gonna go back to the last example we did where we um, just set up the integral. And I'm just gonna re-sketch that. In fact, I think that's actually what's in this picture right here. Um, so I'm just actually gonna sketch it on this picture. Let's say that this line, the equation of the line is, well, up here we, we solved for y and we called it y equals one half x, but originally it was x equals two y. And then the sideways parabola, instead of breaking it up into two separate pieces, we could capture it as a whole if we write it as x equals y squared minus three. All right, so if we leave these in terms of x, um, the, the problem with, or not the problem, but the reason the way we set it up in the last example would have been complicated is because we said when we use what we call dx rectangles, so the width is delta x, when we use those, um, the top and bottom functions switch at x equals negative two. So to solve that one, you would need to do two different um, integrals. However, um, we can instead use what we call dy rectangles. So a dy rectangle is going to be perpendicular to the y-axis, and the dy is the differential of y, where I could think of that as like my delta y. So this time, instead of, instead of solving the equations for y, we would keep them in this form where they are solved for x. And so if we wanted to um, capture this integral, now instead of going up and down, we're gonna consider these sideways, um, these sideways rectangles, and we're gonna consider instead of the top and the bottom, we're gonna have a left and a right function. So this is the one that is on the left, and x equals 2y is the one that is on the right, oops, to capture that area. So if we were to set this one up, um, there's a few things that are gonna be different and it's really important. So the first, we know we're gonna integrate, but instead of top minus bottom, we need to do right minus left. So right minus left. And just think of a number line, like you always wanna do greater minus lesser. So either top minus bottom if it's a vertical number line or right minus left if it's a horizontal number line. So my rightmost function is 2y, x equals 2y, and my leftmost function is y squared minus three. So we would set this up and now, so 2y minus y squared minus three. I need to put that second part in parentheses. So instead of a dx, because we're not gonna integrate this with respect to x, we're gonna integrate this with respect to y. So um, these rectangles are laying on their side. So their height, their height is the right minus left part, and their width is the dy. So just like um, we stressed in the be very beginning of this unit, God, that feels like that was a long time ago, <laughs> the functions, like subtracting the functions, that gives us the height, and then that gives us the width of the rectangle. So the other thing we need are limits of integration. When we work with dx rectangles, like every rectangle we worked with was a dx rectangle. So when we have a dx rectangle, I'm gonna write this above this last example, the limits are in terms of x, these are x values. The integrand is in terms of x, and we have a dx. So similar to that, when we work with our dy rectangles, they're, they're horizontal rectangles. This is in terms of y. The integrand is y stuff. 
And same thing, that our limits are now no longer x values, but they're y values. So they tell us where to stop and end. So we want the, like the lowest y value and then our uppermost y value. So we already found these ordered pairs in the last problem. Um, when we solved, we actually solved it the way, if you noticed I was hesitant to solve it this way, because the way we're solving it is how I do it for these dy rectangles, but it works out just fine. So we found that the ordered pair down here was um, x equals negative two, y equals negative one, and the ordered pair up here is x equals six, y equals three. So in the, when we set up this last one, again, our limits of integration, here's our final answer we got to, our limits of integration were x values from negative three to two and negative two to six. Down here, our limits of integration are y values from negative one to three. So I'm just gonna rewrite this one more time clearly that we could integrate from negative one, our lowest y, to negative three, our uppermost y, the function on the right minus the function on the left. I'm not gonna work it out because I think it's worked out right under this. So the question is, like, why would we wanna do this? Why is this easier? Well, look, there's only one integral. The right function is always x equals two y, and the left, I guess I keep wanting to call this a function, let's say curve, because it is not a function. The left curve is always x equals y squared minus three. So we don't have to use multiple integrals, we just need everything in terms of y. And in short, that's what it is to work with dy rectangles. I'm not gonna read this text, you should read it, but this is the example that we were just talking about up there. So this is that last one that we didn't work out, I'm going to skip it and come to this. <laughs> All right, so um, sketch a graph of each of the regions described below and determine if dx or dy rectangles would be better. We're not actually gonna solve these, we're just gonna figure out which would be better. So we're given the region bound by the square root of x plus three, um, y equals x minus three and the x axis. So this first one, the square root of x plus three, um, again, that's gonna cause me to translate the square root of x function to the left, three spaces. So this is one that we were already working with before. Um, y equals x minus three. I know that's just a line with a slope of one and a y-intercept of negative three. So I'm just gonna kind of sketch it. Uh. And then lastly, the x-axis, which we know is the same as y equals zero. So I'm just gonna. Outline the y-axis, or the x-axis, I mean. All right, so the question is, which would be better, dx rectangles or dy rectangles? Well, let's take a look. If I, Let's try dx rectangles first. So my dx rectangles go from top to bottom. And if I do this dx rectangle, the top function is my orange um, square root of x plus three, the bottom is the x axis. But as I come, oops, as I come over here, they have changed. The top is the same, but the bottom is now this linear one that I forgot to write down, y equals x minus three. So I would have to do two different integrals. I would argue that the easier one is probably gonna be our dy rectangles because no matter where I draw my dy rectangles, so like here's a dy, even if I draw one all the way right down here, right up against the axis. What's on the right is always um, the line and what's on the left is always this curve. So um, just to set this one up, we're not gonna solve it, but let's 
um, let's just set it up real fast. If we wanted to set this up and use dy rectangles, that looks like a pencil, not a pen, um, we would need to solve these for x. So instead of y equals x minus three, I would want x equals y plus three. And instead of y equals um, the square root of x plus three, I would want y squared minus three equals x. And I'd have to be careful because y squared minus three equals x is gonna also be like reflected down here. So I'd wanna make sure to only use the uppermost um, part of that. And so if we were to set this up, we would have our right minus left. So on the right hand side is the line um, y plus three. And on the left hand side is the curve y squared minus three. We're using y's, so these are our dy rectangles. And then we want our lowest point to our upper point. So our lowest point's the x-axis, that's where y equals zero. And then our upper point, we would just need to find that intersection right there. And um, let's see, I'm looking at the, we could set these equal. So we could set them equal and say that um, y squared minus three equals, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go back to the original. Let's do square root of x plus three equals x minus three. Ugh, I don't know if this way is gonna be better. Square both sides, x plus three on the left. I keep going back and forth. Nope, we want y values, sorry scratch that. Um, it will work either way. I'm just trying to save time even though I'm wasting time talking. All right, y squared minus three equals x. We're gonna set that equal to y plus three. Yeah, this way is way easier. Sorry, it took me a second. Um, I'm gonna subtract everything over. So y squared minus one y, subtract three, that's a minus six equals zero. I'm gonna factor. Um, Multiplies to negative six, adds to negative one. That's gonna be a negative three, a positive two. So y equals negative two and positive three. So obviously this would have to be the positive three up top. Um, and we're not concerned about this lower intersection. So from zero to three, that is how we would write this one. All right, last example, we won't set it up. We'll just determine which are better, the dx or the dy. So the region in quadrant one, so we already know we're bound by the X and Y axis, or we, we might be, it says it over here that we are, the coordinate axes. Um, we have X squared plus two. So I know that's a parabola, it's concave up, it has a Y intercept of two. And X equals three. Remember X equals three is a vertical line. So one, two, three. It would be somewhere out here, that would be x equals three. So we're looking at the region bound by those two curves and the coordinate axes. So it's a little, um, it's four points here. And again, the question is what's better, dx or dy? So if we look at our dx, if we make dx rectangles, the top and the bottom never change. On the other hand, if we make dy rectangles, up near the top, the left and the right, um, the right is always x, x equals three. Um, when you get closer to the bottom though, the left function changes. So the left function at the bottom is x equals zero, that's the equation for the y-axis, whereas at the top, it's y equals x squared plus two, and we could solve for x if we were doing our dy rectangles. So that won't work. Um, so, it, well, let me back up, it'll work, but it won't be the easiest way. So what we want 
I believe here would be just good old DX rectangles. 